Acts chapter 15. Acts chapter 15, verse 1. But some men came down from Judea and were teaching the brothers, unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. Verse 2. After Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and debate with them, Paul and Barnabas had some of the, and some of the others were appointed to go to Jerusalem to the apostles and the elders about this question. When they came to Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church and the apostles and the elders, and they declared all that God had done for them. Look at verse 5. But some believers who belonged to the party of the Pharisees rose up and said, It is necessary to circumcise them and to order them to keep the law of Moses. The apostles and the elders were gathered together to consider this matter, and after they had been much debate, Peter stood up and said to them, Brothers, you know that in the early days God made a choice among you that by the mouth of the Gentiles should hear the word of the gospel and believe. He then goes on to talk, and we're going to look at verse 12. All the assembly fell silent, and they listened to Barnabas and Paul as they related the signs and wonders that God had brought um, them among the Gentiles. I'm going to pray, and we're going to jump into this sermon. Um, and let's, So let's pray right now. Heavenly Father, Lord, you are gracious, kind, loving, just, holy, righteous. Lord, we, we need you. We have hurting people all through here who need you. They need a word from you. I need a word from you. We need each other and we need you. And Lord, in our culture, it's become common to fight with anyone about anything except for the gospel and for each other. And Lord, I pray that you would raise a church here in Westerville who is known that we are fighting for the gospel and for others. I pray that that would burn in our hearts and in our souls and we would be people who share the gospel and who fight and believe for each other, not against each other. And Lord, I thank you for the worship today. I thank you for the prayers that I received from our prayer team today, Lord. Lord, you know I needed them. Lord, you know it's impossible right now to find a Starbucks that's open anywhere at some at any time for some random reason, Lord. So I only had one cup of coffee, Lord. So your spirit has to move, and it has, and I am grateful for that. In Jesus' name, amen. You ever, uh, you ever gotten an argument with a random stranger? You can raise your hand to that. It's okay. All right, couple, couple of us, couple of us. Good, good, good. Uh, I got into an Uber this week in Atlanta and um, got in. From the airport, I had a 58-minute Uber ride, and I got in. I did not realize that you can hit the quiet preferred button on that thing. I didn't know that. I definitely will do that from now on because I got in, and I sat down, and the guy said to me, hey, where are you from? So I'm from Columbus. He said, oh, you guys are the worst. I'm like, oh, <laughs> There goes your tip. <laughs> right? I was like, oh, okay. He's like, oh, you fans think you're good at football and you're trash. You guys are nothing but trash. I'm like, wow. Okay. He starts going on. Ohio State fans are the worst fans. Arrogant. I mean, he's just every year you make it to the playoffs and you steal it from somebody else. And then you get blown out by the good teams and you shouldn't be. Here. I mean, he's just letting, letting me have it. Just tearing into me. So I'm like trying to change the conversation. So I'm like, well, you know, I'm, I'm more of a Columbus Crew fan. Oh, soccer fans. Why are you guys rolling around on the ground when you get stepped on? I'm like, what is the deal here? <laughs> like, what's going on? So I'm trying to just be quiet now. Like, he's already insulted all of Columbus. Now he's going after soccer. And then he says, so where are you? Have you spent your whole life in Columbus? I'm like, I don't want to answer this question. <laughs> I said, no, I'm. I'm from Michigan. He's like, they're worse than Ohio State. You can't beat Ohio State. And for like 15 minutes, he just berates everything about the state of Michigan. It's cold, snow. I mean, he's just going on and on. And finally, I was like, you know what? If we're going to fight, we're going to fight what I want to fight about. So I said to him, like, middle of the thing, yeah, man, honestly, you know, you seem to know a lot more about sports than I do. I'm not really that much of a fan. You know what I'm a fan of? I'm a fan of Jesus. And then he was like, oh, not another word the rest of the drive. I, I tried to talk to him three times from then on, just, just <laughs> like it was over. I decided, hey, man, you're going to fight me. I'm going to fight what I want to fight about, right? 
I'm not even an Ohio State fan and you're yelling at me. I decided that from then on, because I had a lot of Uber rides around that city, I'm like, from now on, I am opening with, hey, I'm a pastor. What do you do? So every Uber ride from that point on, I was like, hey, I'm a pastor. I'm a follower of Jesus. You know that our church gained two Instagram followers? We had someone click on our website. I was like, man, this is, this is what we should be fighting about. Paul and Barnabas, Acts chapter 15. They decide that there is something worth fighting for in their life. And it's very important to know what you fight for. Because if you know what you're going to fight for, it will keep you from always fighting about different things. If you know, knowing what to fight for helps us learn what not to fight about. If you know, hey, in my life, I am for this, it will keep you from being distracted with all of the other fights that are going on in the world right now. And there's a lot of them. I mean, I mean, we, ju just, we could just open up with its opening week of college football. And we could list 50 new fights that we could all have right now, right? Add to that that it's fall. Add to that that there's this issue and this issue and this issue and this issue. Add to that that there's this person and this person. And some of us have a list of things we fight about a mile long. And some of us go even further. Some of us have like, I fight about this, these 20 things, and I fight with these 20 people. And then some of us go even further. You say, I fight about these 20 things. I fight with these 20 people, and I know everyone in the church who also is fighting with each other. I mean, we all know what we fight about, and we all know who we're fighting against. If I were to ask you to make a list, <laughs> please do not do this, but of people that you have a beef with, or you have, uh, you're going to spill the tea with, or you have beef with, or you have a feud with, however you want to call it, we could make a list for sure. But I wonder if we know what we're fighting for. See, Paul and Barnabas fought for grace. They fought for grace. If you read the beginning of this, it says that they were trying to add, there was people who were trying to add to the gospel, hey, you need to be saved by Jesus Christ, and then you need to do this in order to be saved. Hey, you want to be a Christian? That's fine. Have uh, grace through Jesus Christ alone and then also add this to it. Hey, you want to be a Christian? Okay, do this and accept Jesus. Hey, you want to be a Christian? Okay, pray it this way and accept Jesus. Hey, you want to be a Christian? Okay, do these works and accept Jesus. You want to be a Christian? Attend this church and accept Jesus. You want to be a Christian? Demonstrate this gift and accept Jesus. And there's a list a mile long of things that we all want to add to grace. But Paul and Barnabas said, we will fight for salvation through Jesus Christ alone. It's ironic because our culture now pushes on us the idea that we should fight about everything else except the gospel. Have you ever noticed this? It's okay for Christians to fight about every issue under the sun. But hey, we don't want to offend people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we're not really going to talk about him. We, got, we, we, we don't even do gospel invitations anymore because in church we don't want to offend people with the gospel. But we got the same time. We got sermons just absolutely about whatever we're mad about, but we can't give the gospel at the end. We fight about everything except for the one thing Paul and Barnabas were willing to fight for. The gospel of Jesus Christ. And we try to do it in clever ways. We say things like share the gospel and when necessary use words, which makes no sense. It's like trying to explain, I'm married and, and if absolutely necessary, I'll tell you my wife's name. No. I love my wife, so I'm willing to talk about my wife. If you love the gospel, you're willing to talk about the gospel. We don't give the gospel out of a desire to be rude or mean or unkind or pick fights, but... We do give the gospel because this is the thing that we should be fighting for. 
Jesus, our creator, came to this earth, born in a manger, lived a perfect, sinless, spotless life, and died because we could not pay the punishment for our own sins. So he paid the punishment for us. He died and shed his blood for us so that we could go to heaven through faith in him by the power of the Holy Spirit. And one day we can stand in the presence of God the Father. That's what we fight for. But in our culture, we have literally debates over essential oils before we will have a debate about the gospel. Oh, girl, I only use frankincense. Well, I use myrrh. Well, how about you tell the story of frankincense and myrrh being at the nativity? I mean, we fight about it all. Everything besides the only thing that matters Listen, I'm not telling you these things are not important. They are important. But at the end of the day, none of those things will save your soul. Ohio State football will not save my soul. Minnesota will not save my soul. Michigan will not save my soul. Political issues, amen, will not save my soul. None of these things will save our soul. And we have bought into, as Christians We have bought into the lie that we can fight for anything besides the gospel. Meanwhile, literally right now, on the other side of the world, there are Christians who are dying for the gospel we're afraid to mention. And we're fighting about which coffee is better. When you get to heaven and you meet a martyr, will it really matter? Which coffee you drank? Hey, what'd you do? How'd you get here? Well, these guys came. They buried me in the sand, lit me on fire, and told me that because I was a Christian, I had to die. How'd you get here? Well, I got in a fight with someone. They cut me off in traffic, and so I ran into them, and then I hit a pole, and I'm here. Will these things matter when we arrive in eternity? We have to learn what to fight for. Paul and Barnabas were willing to fight for grace. Think about this. Think about, and you look back at Acts chapter 15, where did they go to have this debate? Back to Jerusalem. Jerusalem's where Paul was nearly killed. Jerusalem is where James was killed. Jerusalem is where John the Baptist was beheaded. Jerusalem is where Jesus died. And here's two leaders of the Christian faith willing to travel for hours, days, and weeks to go back knowing that when they do, there will be other people who will say salvation is not through Jesus. It is through Jesus and doing this. And they were willing to go all the way to Jerusalem to fight for the gospel. I wonder how many of us are willing to walk across the room to defend the gospel. How many of us are willing to go to the next door neighbor and, hey, neighbor, made you these brownies. My name's Jason. I'm a Christian. Bible says love your neighbor as yourself. Wanted to invite you to my church, let you know I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. Oh, I I can't do that. I'll put my sign up in the yard and tell them what I believe politically, though. That's fine. I mean, we fight about everything but the thing we should be fighting for. And I wonder if we're willing to go anywhere to fight for the gospel. I talked to one of the, someone high up in the church world, and I was like, give me a plane ticket. I will go to Afghanistan today, and I will witness to everyone I bump into they, oh, we can't do that. We can't go over there. We can't. There's no way we can go to another country right now. We'll fight about everything. We won't go to Jerusalem to fight about the gospel. So now our churches are full of invitations. Raise your hand if you want to see the light. What does that mean? We don't give the gospel. We don't do that. We don't talk. We don't talk about Jesus. I don't want to be the people. I don't want to be offensive. But I'll share every other opinion besides the one 
that will change their soul for eternity. And I'm preaching to myself. My wife's way better than, um, than I am at this. My wife, if you ever have her as a waitress, if you're a waiter, if you're a waitress, if, she, if you're her barista, if you know her very long, she's going to invite you. And I'm, I'm like, hey, I can talk to you about football. But what does football matter at the end of the day? It's all about the gospel. And we need to be a church that is all about the gospel. But secondly, look at verse 37. Now Barnabas wanted to take with them John called Mark, but Paul thought best not to take them with them, one who had withdrawn from them in Pamphylia and had not gone with them to the work. Verse 39, there arose a sharp disagreement. It's a Christian way of fighting. So they separated from each other. Barnabas took Mark with him and sailed away to Cyprus. Paul chose Silas and departed, having been commended by the brothers to the grace of the Lord. We fight for the gospel, but Barnabas was willing to fight for people. Barnabas was willing to fight for people. Barnabas saw the value in Mark before anyone, including Mark, did. If you read Acts chapter 13, you'll see that Mark was with them on their first missionary trip. They went to this place called Pamphylia. It got rough. Eventually, Paul gets stoned. I mean, he gets rocks thrown at him until people think he's dead. And John Mark says, <laughs> uh, I got to go, guys. He goes back to Jerusalem, and then Barnabas and Paul get called back to Jerusalem. And when they're in Jerusalem, Barnabas says, hey, you know what? Let's take him with us on the next one. And Paul's like, no way. He abandoned us. We're not taking him anywhere. And they begin to have this very sharp disagreement. And see, the truth is, some of us are willing to fight about anything with anyone, but Barnabas was willing to fight for anyone. There is a divine difference between being willing to fight with anyone and being willing to fight for anyone. Barnabas saw in Mark something special, and he was willing to fight Paul, the man, the myth, the legend, for this young person. He believed in him so much that he said, I will fight for you. I will fight for you when you don't think you can make it. I will fight for you. I will believe in you when no one else does. And Barnabas was willing to fight for him. Here's the crazy thing. Barnabas had fought for Paul earlier when no one believed in Paul. And now he was willing to fight Paul for Mark, believing that someday Mark would fight for Paul. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 11. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 11, because this is the end of this debate. 2 Timothy 4, 11, this is Paul. He says, Luke alone is with me. Get Mark and bring him with me. For he is very useful to me for ministry. Mark was only useful to Paul because Barnabas fought for him before anybody else would. And I know we are willing to fight with people. I mean, we, I see it on social media. We follow each other. I see it. We're willing to fight with anyone about anything. Maybe every now and then the gospel. But do you have a list of people you are fighting for? What if before you said that thing about that one person, every time you went to say it about them, you mentioned the name of 10 people you were fighting for first? What if we just carried around list of people? Hey, I'm fighting for this person. I'm fighting for this person. I'm fighting for this person. Hey, I'm fighting for you. I'm fighting for you. I believe in you. What if we were known as a church, not that was famous for what it was fighting against, but who it was fighting for? What if we had a church in Westerville that believed more in fighting for each other than it did fighting against anyone? 
What if we were known, hey, those people, man, they're loud, they're crazy, they talk about coffee, they do all these weird things, but boy, they will be in your corner and they will fight for you even if you don't believe in yourself. Barnabas had fought Paul, had fought for Paul. Now he was willing to fight Paul for Mark, believing that someday Mark would fight for Paul. He believed in him when no one else would. And this is kind of the end of Barnabas. We don't really hear much about Barnabas after this because the book of Acts transitions to Paul and Silas. And he kind of fades into obscurity. But books later, books later, Paul says, hey, bring Mark. He's, he's useful to me. Because a long time ago, someone who believed in me also believed in him. And I need someone with me right now who will believe in me. Truth is, all of us need somebody who will fight for us. Every one of us needs a person who they say, you know what? Hey, I can go to that person and they will fight for me. So who who are you fighting for? Who's in your list of, man, I will fight for that kid until the day I die? If I tell you something, I, I, I mentioned Brandon and Curtis for a reason. They have a, uh, they have a friend named Logan. Dan is our wildlife group coordinator. Dan texted me, hey, I think these guys can lead men's group. And I'm like, well, I don't, you know, hey, uh, let's, let's think. And Dan said, no, I believe in them. Dan fought for them, and now they are fighting for the men in our church. Everybody needs somebody who will fight for them. A while ago, we had someone in in our worship team. He was willing to fight anyone, but he would never fight for anyone. And one time he came to me and said, I got a list of people that can't be in worship, but if you want me to be in it, and I was like, then I don't want you to be in it. Because I want people in our church who will fight for each other, not against each other. I want a church full of believers who will say, hey, I am fighting for you, and I believe in you. Why? We fight for people because Jesus fought for us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. When we were enemies, the Bible calls us, with God. Jesus died for us. And this should motivate us to be people who fight for each other. People who say, I'm with you till the end. I'm beside you to the end. I am for you. You're in my group, I'm fighting for you. You're in my team, I'm fighting for you. You're in my church, I'm fighting for you. You're in my squad, you're in my family, I'm fighting for you. I fight for you. What if we had a church that was known for fighting for the gospel and for each other? What if we had a church full of people who said, I'm there for you when you need it? You're fighting, you're fighting a battle. Right now, if I told you stories of people who are fighting real spiritual battles right now, people who have gone through tragedies in the last month, you wouldn't believe it. But person after person in our church has gone through thing after thing, and we need to fight for each other. We all need someone who will throw an arm around us and say, I'm here for you. So I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet. Ask the worship team to come up here. I'm going to ask the prayer team to come up here. Are you willing to fight for the gospel? I mean, truthfully, you willing to defend the gospel to somebody? I don't want to offend them. The gospel's offensive. At the end of the day, we were lost without him. That's offensive. At the end of the day, our own sins cannot save us is offensive. You willing to fight for the gospel? 
Or have you bought into the cultural lie that tells us we should fight about everything with everyone, but never the gospel? Never the gospel. Who are you fighting for? Who knows right now if they are in a corner, they can call you. Who knows right now that if even if they don't believe in themselves, if they, hey, I, I just can't do it, but you know what? I think so-and-so thinks I can. Who is that for you? Who's fighting for you, and who are you fighting for? I'm going to ask you to bow your heads. I'm going to ask you to close your eyes.